My name is Nassim Sabs. In folklore, the doppelganger is a strange entity, a biologically unrelated copy, physical and perhaps even mental, of a living person. The concept appears in the mythology and traditions of many cultures throughout human history. Whilst two unrelated people can look uncannily alike, the doppelganger is said to be something other a paranormal being that is an apparition of a living person, a spirit double, or as the literal translation of the German word states, a double walker or double goer. Undeniably an unnerving concept, in some of the most sinister tales of doppelgangers, these beings are claimed to stalk their earthly counterpart in the hopes of taking their place, and may even be a servant of death itself. Welcome to some of the most dangerous humanoids in any structured society, team building exercise, or functional story whose overwhelming abilities rarely actually get used in D&D. That would be the doppelganger, and to an almost exact extent, the changelings. Before I jump into the topic of doppelgangers in a campaign, I do want to cover what a changeling is and the difference between the two. Both of these natural shapeshifters and face stealers have one or more fake identities and one original form. For changelings, their original design was a featureless androgynous humanoid with white hair. Then they became troll dolls and now they look like Apple's next project. Doppelgangers went from being caught blowing ghosts, to grandpa on the computer at 3am, to Martians, to... Wait a minute, that's the same lady. That's the same lady from one edition before. Hmm... Oh, and now they're wrinkly leather bag people. The major difference between the two races, aside from the fact that changelings come from Eberron, is that a changeling will create personalities and identities, where a doppelganger chooses to steal them because it takes less effort. One of the first books to popularize the term doppelganger was Catherine Crow's 1848 book on paranormal phenomena, The Night Side of Nature. In her book, Crow explores the idea of the human soul having the ability to unanchor itself from the physical body, whilst in a state of trance or catalepsy, with the freed spirit being as the spirits of the actual dead, free to roam, and if it so chooses, interact with others. Most commonly, it is surmised, one would find themselves able to perform such an act of bilocation when close to death. When writing about doppelgangers in 1848, Crow stated that whatever the cause for their manifestation, encounters with doubles happen in all places, and to a great variety of people. It could be argued that such a statement has never been truer. A simple online search reveals innumerable personal testimonies of disturbing encounters with doubles. Not merely uncanny look-alikes, but doubles of the sinister, supernatural variety. Some of the most unnerving encounters are those which involve replicas of loved ones. Such a story comes from a Reddit user by the name of Geobyte, who claimed that one Sunday morning, they and their family received an unexpected knock on the door of their apartment. The floor above was empty, and so no one should have been at the door. Moving to the window that looked out to the door, they were surprised to see their father on the other side, trying to get into the apartment. As they went to unlock the door to let him in, they state that their mother rushed towards them and pulled them away from the door, clearly distressed, looking out the window also, and telling her child to go to the farthest room in the apartment and to not come out. The man at the door, the poster claims, was not their father, for he was asleep in the room next door. By the time he was woken up, his double at the door had started knocking, seemingly determined to get inside the apartment. Despite asking the figure who he was, there was no reply. He is said to have simply stood there, staring, waiting to be let in. The real father prepared to confront his sinister double with a baseball bat, but by the time he opened the door, the figure was supposedly gone. 
Whilst it is, of course, impossible to verify this testimony, with many undoubtedly skeptical of paranormal experiences being shared online in this way, the phenomena as a whole is difficult to ignore. Everywhere you go, all across the world and throughout time, there are claims of doppelgangers, both benign and malevolent. Arguably, the doppelganger is one of the most terrifying supernatural entities one can imagine encountering, for it challenges our very sense of self, most especially when others, those who love us as individuals, are taken in by the double, believing it to be the true version of ourselves. Such instances make explanations of mistaken identity, which many cases can be explained away as being, more difficult to believe. How can partners, friends, siblings and even parents who know the real person intimately be so fooled by another person who simply resembles the original? That is the issue with an ultimate, conclusive explanation, and what makes the following alleged experience, shared by a woman who claims her doppelganger was trying to replace her, so terrifying. Shared in 2015 and reported on by multiple media outlets, the story was originally posted as a partially fictionalized account of allegedly true happenings. Since then, in 2018, the experiencer has come forward with an unembellished, supposedly truthful version. According to the woman's revised testimony, many members of her family saw her double, believing it to be her. Instances include her husband seeing her at home when she was at work, and even her infant son being taken in by the doppelganger when it appeared in his room and began singing him a lullaby. The woman and her husband, she claims, heard the singing from another room. When she went to investigate, she heard footsteps running away from her son's room and found him upset. He was confused as to why she had stopped singing and left so suddenly. He All cool comparing Tiffany Trump to Miley Cyrus and you can't miss this. Everyone's favorite television pop star is being brought back to life in the form of Tiffany Trump. Tiffany Trump tried to get voters to see her father in a new light, but all Twitter saw was a Miley Cyrus look-alike. Many viewers who watched Tuesday night's Republican National Convention may have missed the point of her message because they were simply too distracted by her uncanny resemblance to Miley Cyrus. You? He fully believed that the figure who sang to him was his mother. As time went by, it is said to have become increasingly obvious to the woman that her double, whatever it was, was seeking to replace her. She claims that she never actually did get a good look at whatever was haunting her family, but that it created much chaos and trauma, including her son suffering from night terrors for several months. Eventually, the encounters simply stopped and the doppelganger was gone. Unless, of course, it wasn't, and it had actually achieved its intention of infiltrating and replacing the original. One paranormal explanation for doppelgangers is that, far from being a malevolent spirit entity, these figures are merely versions of ourselves that exist in another dimension. They are, in short, a bleed-through from a parallel universe. What might cause such a bleed-through to occur is, of course, unknown. However, such an explanation does suggest that whilst the manifestation of a double may appear sinister, it is rather more mundane, and quite possibly entirely harmless. Even so, that has not stopped people who have encountered so-called doppelgangers from being shocked or even fearful by what they have seen. The original myth of doppelgangers, or fetches, isn't very different from banshees, or time travel paradoxes. If you see yourself out in the wild, and you're sure it wasn't a mirror, you better head straight to a testator and get your will written because- Honey, you've got a big storm coming. I think the best way to handle a doppelganger's introduction is as a corpse, in the last place that your party expects them. Be it a prominent friend, foe, or figure, if they die and turn into a fake-out, Whatever plot you had just went from apples and oranges to ogres and onions, because you have layers. The questions immediately start piling on. Why were they here? How long were they a doppelganger? Who were they really? And who sent them? That's basically doppelgangers. 